What is up guys, welcome back to yet another video. My name is Franco Torres and I'm a guitar player slash guitar instructor from Puerto Rico and today is the 10th installment of the music theory lessons and I'm actually really excited about that. <laughs> the fact that I've been you know, doing these for the past year, I haven't been able to actually fully commit to doing more of these because uh, college life and whatnot, but I'm actually done with college so I'm gonna be doing more of these videos now. I'm really excited about that. I'm um, actually very excited about that just in case, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so today's video we're going to be talking about a little bit more theory, of course, and harmony and, and how to start applying it and whatnot, particularly extensions, which is actually a very important topic when talking about harmony and what notes to start adding, you know, to spice things up and to make it sound a little bit, you know, different and to kind of get the ball going, you know. So let's talk about what extensions are and how to start applying them. Of course, this is going to be very... Uh, subjective to who's playing and who's adding the stuff however there's a certain kind of guideline into doing all of these of course uh, so you have to know certain rules to be able to break them and to do whatever you want to do with them uh, and not, so it's also going to depend on genre and whatnot so you know it, it goes both ways so what's an extension an extension is basically just a note or notes that we start adding on top of a triad chord that we have or just a fundamental chord, and we add these notes to kind of create this sort of tension and maybe even resolve it um, later on, or sometimes they don't really resolve. However, mostly we use them to create tension resolution. We also use them to kind of add a little bit more fullness to the sound, if that makes any sense, and just to make things sound uh, kind of a little bit different than they would, you know, if we would play only triads. So. Uh, they are kind of ornaments, you may say, uh, to kind of change the way of the music that you're playing and, and kind of change the vibe, if that makes any sense. So basically, these extensions have multi-purpose. So um, how do we start getting into them and what are they? So the extensions that we kind of start having are 7s, 9s, 11s, and 13s. Of course, the 7s may be obvious to, you know, a bunch of people, but it's not necessarily obvious to those who are actually getting started in all of this, so that's why I'm mentioning it. Um, so when we start to kind of harmonize chords and harmonize scales, we start getting these triads, which is where the chords come from, uh, and then if we start to kind of add on and stack on top of that, we start to get all of these different extensions that I mentioned. So we have the sevens first, which, you know, as you may already know, if you've watched my other videos, we have major sevens and then we have minor sevens. So the minor sevens is what we get on dominant chords and minor sevens chords. And then the major sevens is what we get on major sevens chords. And we also get that on minor major sevens chords. So um, if you notice the major seven, that whole term means that we have a major sevens in relation to that chord. So to whatever root we're talking about. Um, and then if we have a minor 7, of course, or a minor 7. And quick side note, a very easy way to recognize this um, is when in a paper you see whichever note that you see on the paper and then you see a 7 alone. If that 7 is alone, it's going to be minor 7. So it's going to be not necessarily a minor 7 chord, but it's going to be a dominant 7 or a minor 7 interval. So that means that that 7s is going to be a minor 7s in relation to whatever root we're talking about. So if you see, for example, a C7, that means the 7s is a dominant 7s or a minor 7s interval. However, if you see a C minor 7, that minor kind of comes with the C and then the 7s is either way alone. So this is basically kind of like the order of operations in math. But, you know, in music, and I'm not going to really get into math because we're talking about music. Anyways, I digress. Uh, so besides those sevens, we also have nines, which, I mean, in terms of how you write these, uh, most of the time, all of these extensions are going to kind of suggest that we already have a sevens added. So these add up on top of the sevens. Um, so... That's something that you should kind of acknowledge uh, from now on the get-go when talking about extensions. However, if it says add something, then that's a whole different story for a whole other video. So yeah, after the seventh, we have the ninth. The ninth is basically kind of the easiest note to start adding on to the chords. It's gonna sound really, really good, and it, it's, it doesn't really get in the way. It kind of just 
adds more on top of that and it makes the chord sound really, really nice. So, um, if you were to add these, of course, if we're on a guitar and uh, you want to add a ninth, you don't, you know, we only have five fingers and we have four for this hand, you know, we can do certain things to play, obviously, the six strings. Um, but if you have to kind of take a note out of the chord that you're already playing to add that ninth, you can take out the fifth. Lots of people don't care about the fifth. Um, however, of course, you can really take it out. Uh, it's really just, if you want to change it up, just take out the fifth. Uh, maybe change that for the third and just play, you know, change the shape of the chord and add the sevens and then add the nines on top. And it's going to sound really, really nice. Uh, the ninth is a really, really common note to start using. It's used all over every different genre. Uh, because it, it just kind of gives a different type of fullness than the, you know, fifth of a chord does. And it sounds really nice. So, a ninth is really common. We also had flat ninths and sharp ninths. Which, again, are going to depend on what we're playing, what type of chord we're playing. And not every chord is going to have a sharp ninth and not every chord is going to have a flat nine. So, that's... A whole other topic for another video. So yeah, that's kind of a tricky subject and we may talk about that later on. Uh, but basically, dominant chords can have either or a sharp 9 or a flat 9. However, if they have a flat or a sharp, it's going to depend on the context of whatever we're playing. For example, a flat 9 pairs very well with a, you know, whatever chord you play after it, if you know, you're resolving it. Uh, considering that that flat nine usually resolves to the fifth of the next chord, so that's kind of a guide that you can use to when using a flat nine. For example, add something like a D seven flat nine, and then resolve it into a G minor or major, and that flat nine, that note that's on that you know flat nine, resolves into the fifth of the next chord. gonna sound really nice it's it's gonna have like this sort of sound that you get sort of a resolution onto it so that's something that we like a lot now on to the next one we also have an 11th the 11th is also another one that we can fairly use on certain chords easily um, for example we can use 11th chords on minor 7th chords and they're gonna sound really really nice a minor 7th chord with an 11 so a minor 11th chord <laughs> It's gonna sound really nice. It's gonna be a note that's gonna sound really, really good. Uh, you can also add it on certain major chords. <laughs> For example, if we have something like a suspended major chord, we can add the 11s there, uh, and it's gonna work very well. However, if we have a major chord, we're gonna want to hold back on the 11s depending on how we play it, and that's a key phrase on all of this that I'm mentioning and on everything that I'm mentioning here. This is all subjective and this is kind of just a guideline for you guys to, you know, kind of get started in all of this. But if something sounds good to you and you want to use it for writing music, you know, use it. That's what music is about. That's what expression is about. And that's how the great musicians that we have kind of got to where they are. They started using things that weren't common at that time and were really frowned upon but they used it anyways and they got to where they were and they wrote our history. So, you know, who's to stop you from being another one of the great musicians? Um, so, anywho, you know, getting back to the rules that you can, you know, just use to kind of help you out to get started in everything that is um, starting to harmonize your music. So, in 11s, if you're going to add it on a major chord, you're going to kind of want to play around with the voicing, not any voicing with the 11th and the third is gonna sound really well. However, if you wanna get that Lydian sound, you can add the sharp 11 to a major 7th chord and it's gonna sound very nice. Um, we all love that Lydian sound, you know. Mostly guitarists, we all love that. It's, it's our jam, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so after that, we also have the 13s. The 13s is very common to add on 7th chords as well. You 
may have already heard this on the blues and most genres that come out of the blues uh, the 13s are really really common in that of course we also have a flat 13s um, which again as I already mentioned is going to kind of depend on what your context is in in terms of harmony for example a flat 13s is gonna pair really nice uh, with a minor 7th chord afterwards so for example, of course, I'm talking about dominant chord. If you have something like, for example, a G7 or G13, which is a G7 or G dominant with a 13 on top, um, and you play a C minor chord after that, C minor 7, that flat 13 is the third from the next chord, the minor third of the next chord. It's going to sound really nice. And kind of analyzing different songs that you like and seeing how they're using it mostly standards of course if you have the real book just open a real book and start looking at what's going on with the chords um, and start kind of checking out how they're using them on them it's gonna help you a lot and I just kind of wanted to go over the different extensions and kind of explain maybe how to kind of get you going on using these extensions. So that's basically it for the video. I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about this topic and help anyone who's trying to get started on extensions but doesn't exactly know how to. Um, you know, maybe you found this helpful. And if anyone out there did, uh, please consider dropping a like and subscribing down below. That really helps me bring these videos for you guys. And uh, yeah, if you have any other suggestion for anyone else that's getting started with this out there uh, make sure to also drop a comment down below i kind of want to create this community where you know people help other people out and uh yeah that's basically it hopefully i'll see you guys on the next video